Hey guys, Kev here, and I have some packages to open. There's a bunch of random stuff here. So, let's take a look. Got my LaCroix. Um, this first one's from my buddy Ev. And pretty sure this is just him returning a prototype of the Fireball, I think. The uh, design that we're doing with Nick Stassen. Don't think anything else is in here. Nope, nope. Just throw this back. We got a little Devo box. Uh, I think a Nip box I grabbed. And yep, there it is. Fireball prototype. This is a V1 prototype. We are uh, waiting on the V2 prototypes as we speak. And so... Uh, a buddy asked to check this out, so I sent it out to him, and uh, that's what that was. So I can put this books away. See what else we got. Excuse me. Sorry. This one's from Skiff. So this is going to be Skiff Bearings. Nice. We got bearings, and we have a uh, invoice. So these are some extra bearings from Skip, and then uh, a flyer here for the drop point, which I want to talk about real quick. So let me put these in here, and then we can move along. These are just extra 3 16th, 1 16th, and 5 millimeter, 1 16th. Really appreciate Skip for sending these along. I was running low after that run of uh, Peñas and Sharp Eye Designs. I just ripped through a lot of bearings, taking them all apart and um, skiffing them all. Because you know me, I got to do that. So, uh, if you guys have not heard of The Drop Point, The Drop Point is a newsletter of sorts, a blog of sorts, that Skiff Workshop started. And uh, basically, if you're a knife maker... If you're a knife designer, if you're like me and you have a knife company where you have knives made, whatever, you can hit up Skiff and he will add your drops to this newsletter. So what we're hoping is that the knife community will start subscribing to this. And then uh, as it says here, we won't have to worry as much about social media putting us down, right? Um, it's been rough lately with, with Instagram and Facebook's always been a struggle. Um, you know, trying to get your marketing in when they really don't like knives. And so having a dedicated sort of newsletter that everybody can subscribe to in the knife world that will tell you when a drop is for certain knives is really cool. So if you are just a uh, viewer, a knife enthusiast, a buyer, uh, if you're on that side of things, then I highly recommend you sign up for this so you can stay on the up and up with all the upcoming drops. I know I really enjoy it because I can't even keep up with all the drops, right? I kind of come at this from both sides. Uh, of course, I buy a lot of knives uh, and I love knives, so... This is really helpful for that. And then if you're a maker or a designer or whatever, you can reach out to him to make sure that your drops, your pre-orders, whatever, get on the list so that people see it. So definitely check out the Drop Point, guys. It's very cool. It's thedroppoint.com. There's a QR code right here that you can hit up. I'll try to do a little short or something on this as well because I think it's very important to the knife community. So shout out to uh, Skiff Workshop. And uh, check out the drop point. I want to put that somewhere. I will grab it. The next one is from JC Customs. Um, this is a, a flashlight company. And I ordered some um, glow gaskets. And they accidentally sent their own ones. So they are just sending the replacements. And it looks like he sent me more than... Um, more than he needed to so i really appreciate that thank you um so i ordered i think two yellow and two orange and they ended up sending me like an orange 
a yellow and a white or something. It was weird. There was only three and they were wrong. So he ended up sending the two replacements and two extra white ones because I, I actually asked for those because I've found I kind of like the white um, glow gaskets because they don't really interfere with your beam. Um, I've noticed that um, that did say made in the U.S. These glow gaskets are made in the U.S. Um, I noticed that certain colors will actually interfere with the color of your beam when you're using the flashlight. Um, especially like red, um, green, yellow. Um, for instance, I have my Hanko on me today. I actually just got a new one, but it's not here yet. And when I turn this on, you'll see it has this red glow gasket. Now, of course, I have a red secondary. But if I'm using the uh, regular light, let's just say the white light, and I put it down right here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there, yeah, you can't see it on camera, actually, which is funny. But this area right here is all red. Um, so it kind of interferes with your beam. It puts a little red tint onto your uh, beam, which it's not the end of the world or anything, but I just noticed that. I mean, I really like them because they glow, obviously, which is cool. But I found white is actually a good color because it glows this, like, whitish, very, like, light green. And it doesn't interfere because it's white, you know? Your beam is white, so it makes sense. Anyway, uh, that was from JC Customs. Don't worry. This is not a bunch of flashlight stuff. Um... The next one is from Artisan? Artisan Cutlery. Oh, that's right. They said they'd send me a lefty. So I asked for a lefty um, pyrite because I came out with these button lock pyrites in lefty a while ago. I never got one, didn't get it on the pre order, and I just, you know, never got one. So I asked them for one, and they were kind enough to send it. I'm going to go ahead and guess it's going to be some kind of micarta because that's the last one I would choose. Oh, correction. The absolute last one I would choose is Digicamo. <laughs> so I knew something like that was coming, which is perfectly fine. They're, you know, they're giving me this for review. I just find it funny that it's always the, the last thing I, I would want personally. You know, like they had uh, fat carbon ones. That would have been sick. But so anyway, this is a, uh, damn, this is a lefty button lock. So you have a button, obviously, and then you have the pyrite. I have never experienced the pyrite in its, you know, intended form, really, because I'm left-handed. So this is kind of cool. And this is actually uh, really good right off the bat. I'm going to say, you know, it's not swinging down. That'll break in. I like the uh, coated blade. You know, I'd much rather a, a black wash, but not the end of the world. And um, it pops. It Man, having a button lock on the right side seriously makes a huge difference. Um, it's hard to explain, but when you use it on the opposite hand, even though you would think, hey, it's a button lock. Look, see how I'm failing that so easy? Because my, my finger is just ever so slightly. I'm not even, look, I'm not even putting pressure down. But my finger's touching that button, which allows it to kind of release early. But if I'm on this side, oops, if I'm on this side, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, yeah, see, it like, it doesn't, it has a little more resistance. I mean, just touching that button, or maybe it's just the angle. Maybe it's because you're pushing this way on the blade versus pushing this way maybe you're pushing towards the plunge and keeping it engaged kind of like uh when you flick a frame lock lefty or righty but this feels fantastic left-handed so now i'm starting to understand why everybody was so goo goo gaga over the pyrite because you know i liked it i thought it was cool but i didn't think it was like amazing like people did but having this now in my proper hand where I don't have to worry about the button there. Man, it actually feels really good. Let's see. That's good to go. It's the only time I'm going to do that, by the way. I don't want to mess up my 
lock or anything. Um, flips out just fine. Slow rolls just fine. Not the strongest D10 ever, but I'll tell you, that reverse flick feels very satisfying. There is no play. There is a little, I mean, ever so slight up and down. Um, what are we working with? AR RPM 9? Yep, AR RPM 9. I have no problem with that steel, personally. Sharp. Man, this is nice. Kind of makes me want to try to find a more premium one. Left-handed clip, not reversible. <laughs> Digicamo G10 on this side. I didn't even see this one on their website. Assuming this is titanium, because the weight is pretty good. It's not like steel or aluminum. Um, so this is six. So if you're left-handed and you want to try the pyrite, I think this is the way to go, guys. I mean, I am on record as saying I do not love button locks. I uh, kind of hate them right now. But having one right-handed, as in left-handed? You know what I mean. In the right hand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cracking myself up. Um, having one in the right hand, it actually feels much better than uh, usual. So, I digs. I digs. Some cool lefties coming out. You know, the Debo Stout V2. And now this Pyrite. It's been out, though. But, man, if I could find... I think they had, like, 80s um, fat carbon. They were, like, contoured and shit. Those looked sick. Now I kind of want one of those. If anybody has one of those, let me know. I don't know what they cost, but very cool. All right. Pyrite Lefty. Thank you to Artisan. I will link this down below. We do have one more uh, item. This is a Josh Worth purchase. If you guys don't follow the channel like that, he's a uh, moderator on the live streams. And uh, I proxy for him. He's in Australia. And... Um, he is a bougie bastard, and I get to check out some cool knives occasionally because of him. This is from Varga Knives. Um, so this is a VBR. I think this is a new version or something. Is it a V3 or V23 or something? Small VBR, titanium black PVD handle, marbled carbon fiber, acid wash, damn steel, Jesus. He said I wouldn't like it. There it is, VBR MK4, so I guess model four, um, M390 blade, titanium bolster lock, ooh, bolster lock, Varga knives, and I think he did lefties on these, actually. I kind of got over the design a while ago, so I didn't try to pick up a lefty, um, just personally, not my, I guess, aesthetic, I don't know. Um, they are really good, um, but they're a little more beefy than I than I normally like. Um, I do like the idea of a small, though. And I think he did do the small and lefty. Um, so this is right-handed. You got this really cool marbled shredded. I would call this shred, not marble. Carbon fiber. Carbon fervin. That feels really good. I like that we're kind of full circling back to this stuff more now. Um, you know, I do love some, some fancy uh, 80s camo carbon and... Fat carbons, of course, I love that. Here's a size comparison. Small VBR, and there's a mini Tempest. So neither of these are, you know, really small. I think it's a three and a quarter inch blade on the um, VBR. I think three and a half on the mini Tempest. Same size handle, because uh, Brian Nadeau is an absolute just genius. Um, let's see, we got that PVD finished bolster lock or bolster area. We actually have damas steel on the uh, pivot collars, which is pretty damn cool. Now, this has the Riot uh, etch on it, which I just don't love. Um, they don't go dark enough. It's basically like not colored. It's almost not etched at all. Slightly, I guess, they give it a little bit of a gray tone. But I'll be honest, I actually prefer what like Concept did on the uh, AGI here. So they sort of darkened, acid washed the uh, Damascus. And uh, they did, I guess, etch it. But you can see how it's this darker color overall. So the blade is almost like gray. And I feel like the contrast with the uh, Curbin Furbin here 
actually looks better than what you see on this. Now, some people like satin. I love satin. So this gives you more of a satin look. I know this is a bit of blasphemy here. But, um, and this is not Damascus steel. This is Damascus with a 9CR base. Where this is Damascus steel, which I believe is a 154CM base. The action on this is uh, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you can't fail it. It's not the snappiest flipper, but honestly, the fact that it has studs, it's got great, great detent on the studs. Just rip my finger off. Trim my nail just a little too short. Um, you do have a uh, choke, a choke up. You have a choil up here to choke up on, and that is extremely comfortable in the hand. This knife has always been extremely comfortable. Feels good. Um, if I remember correctly, the first one I ever got was a flipper only, I think. Not studs, flipper only. I don't remember exactly, but man, is that smooth. That's going to break in real nice. Get a little click. Very rounded up at the top here. That's always stood out to me on this design. Dead nut center. You got that bolster lock. Nice clip. Long and slender. Should uh, do really well. Just got to be careful not to bend it on accident. Nice backspacer. You got a little pin there. And uh, those damascus steel collars are a nice little touch. Yeah, I just don't love the finish. Uh, I've never been a fan of damascus steel to begin with. But uh, when they get it black... Like when those parts are black, that's when it's nice. But the only time I've ever seen that is uh, custom knife makers. So I just don't think that production companies are going to try to go to that level. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, just too hard or, you know, maybe, and some of these guys might want it this way. I think a lot of people do like it, this gray color. So anyway, there you go. Some two different knives there. You got an artisan uh, lefty pyrite sorry cjrb what i thought this was an artisan okay cjrb lefty pyrite and a varga vbr small um and then we had some other knickknacks here and there so let me know what you guys think uh definitely make sure you check out the drop point from skiff the drop point.com basically is all you need to know there or that qr code let me know your thoughts on these knives and everything. I, um, did I say Neves knives? <laughs> on these knives. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I love you guys. Appreciate you. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Check the links down below for this guy. I'll link this as well. And uh, have a fantastic day. Peace.